Hey guys, Matt Osborne, FitDownFootball.com. We're here today to talk about the top 10 teams for the 2011 college football season. Uh, the way we're going to do it is we're going to look at them conference by conference. We're going to start off with the SEC. First team from the SEC we're going to look at is Alabama. Now the big question for Alabama in 2011 is how they're going to replace their top three offensive skill players from 2010. Um, but I really don't think it should be much of a problem. A.J. McCarron is going to replace Greg McElroy at the quarterback position. McCarron's played very well in his limited time so far in Alabama. There really shouldn't be much of a drop-off at the running back position, even though they lose Heisman Trophy winner Mark Ingram. Trent Richardson's back. They also have a freshman from Florida named D. Hart, who I think is going to get a good amount of carries. Um, at the receiver position, Julio Jones is gone. But they have a couple good receivers who were kind of second and third options last year who should step up, like uh, Marquise Mays, guys like that who should be able to take some of the pressure off. Um, they're returning four of their five offensive line starters, which would be good for McCarron uh, to get things rolling with him. Um, on defense, it was actually a little bit of a weakness for 2010 for Alabama. It was supposed to be a strength. Um, they had to replace a lot of guys. But this, uh, for this upcoming season, they're going to have 10 starters back. They're only losing defensive end Marcel Darius. So with 10 guys coming back in a Nick Saban scheme, you can expect big things from the Crimson Tide defense next year. Second team we're looking at is Auburn. We're going to kind of hold off the analysis on Auburn for right now just because so much of their success is going to be predicated on what Cam Newton does uh, with regard to the NFL draft. So we're just going to hold off on them for right now. Third team from the SEC we're looking at is the LSU Tigers. Now, LSU's problem has been the passing game in recent years. They have a pretty good running attack. Their running back, uh, Ridley's a good runner. Jordan Jefferson, their quarterback, actually was second on the team this past year, but he's had some problems throwing the ball. They were 107th in passing offense last year, and they lose their top receiver, Terrence Tolliver. Um, they do have four or five offensive line starters coming back, though, so that should help out Jefferson. If he can get things going, um, That'll really take them to the next level. On defense, they're losing three first-team All-SEC all starters. Um, that's led by their All-American corner, Patrick Peterson, who's gone. But they have a lot of good young guys who stepped up, made some of the second-team all-conference lists last year. And um, <clears throat> they should really be primed to take over. And it's really going to help them, especially now that Les Miles has officially turned down the Michigan job and is coming back next year at LSU. And the last team we're looking at in the SEC is the South Carolina Gamecocks. Now, this is a team that's really primed to explode on offense next year. Uh, Steven Garcia is back at quarterback. He kind of struggled his first couple years at South Carolina, really performed a lot better last year. Um, he's going to be handing the ball off to Marcus Lattimore, who's sensational, really bolstered the Gamecock rushing attack last year. And throwing the ball to one of the more underrated players in college football, it's Alshon Jeffrey. Big guy, great hands. Uh, he's definitely one of the favorites to be an All-American this season. They have some good experience up front. On the defensive side of the ball, uh, they're losing four starters from their front seven, but they do return the whole entire secondary, led by their safety, Chris Culliver, who's a great player uh, at safety. Um, and also a big thing to keep an eye on is the word on the streets is that South Carolina leads for the number one recruit in the country, and that's Jadavion Clowney. He's a defensive end from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Um, if they can land him, he's going to be an impact player right away. He's 6'6", he's an athletic freak, and he will wreak havoc uh, for opposing quarterbacks if he does end up at South Carolina. Moving on to the ACC, we'll look at Florida State. Um, Seminoles are returning eight starters on each side of the ball. Um, a lot of people are ranking them a little lower than I am just because they lost an All-American guard, Rodney Hudson, and they lost their quarterback, uh, Christian Ponder. But replacing him is going to be a five-star guy, E.J. Manuel. Um, he's more of a dual-threat threat, threat um, than Ponder ever was. He really can run. He's going to add a real different dimension to the Seminole offense that hasn't been there for Jimbo Fisher. Uh, on defense, eight of the 11 guys are coming back. And what's really going to help the Noles is their solid recruiting classes. Uh, three of the past four years, they've been in the top five in recruiting. The other year, they were ninth overall. So they really have some young talent on the defensive side of the ball, and they can really get after people, especially rushing the quarterback. Um, moving on to the Big 12, we have three teams from the Big 12. Starting them off, Oklahoma, who might be the preseason number one. They returned 18 starters, including quarterback Landry Jones, who had an outstanding sophomore season, um, threw for over 4,700 yards, 38 touchdowns, 
Ryan Broyles just recently announced that he's coming back after he had a first-team All-American season at receiver for them. Got some good depth on the offensive line. Um, you know that Bob Stoops always has a good defense going for him in Oklahoma, so with 18 starters back, coming off a Fiesta Bowl win over UConn, they should be primed to be the favorites in, at least in the Big 12 next year. Staying in state, looking at the Oklahoma State Cowboys, who actually just received some big news today. Their quarterback, Brandon Whedon, and first-team All-American receiver uh, Justin Blackman are both coming back next year. They do lose uh, their star running back, Kendall Hunter, but they have a couple guys to replace them. The entire offensive line is back. They got their two most important offensive players. On defense, they actually lose five starters, but this is from a team that ranked 88th in total defense last year. So it actually might be one of those things where they get better by losing those guys. If you recall, a few years ago, they had a $100 million donation to their football program, so they've really improved the facilities, and that's really helped out uh, their staff in terms of recruiting. So a lot of their uh, good young recruits are on the defensive side of the football, so I expect they'll improve this year. Third team we're looking at from the Big 12 is Texas A&M, the Aggies. Um, just like Oklahoma, they're returning 18 starters next year, 10 on the offensive side of the ball, and that's led by their quarterback, Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill actually wasn't the starter at the beginning of the 2000 year, uh, 2010 season. That was uh, Gerard Johnson. He was expected to do it all for A&M. He kind of struggled completing some passes. They put in Tannehill for a change halfway through the season. The Aggies ended up winning their last six games of the year. They beat Oklahoma. They beat Texas. They beat Nebraska. A lot of good teams in there. And uh, Tannehill kind of struggled a little bit in the bowl game against LSU. He threw three picks, but he proved up until that point that he was ready for the big-time competition. I expect big things out of him. And then, of course, coming back, eight players on defense looking good. Actually, in 2009, the Aggies ranked 105th in total defense. That's out of 120 teams. Last year, they improved to 56 with eight players coming back. You can expect those numbers to get even better. And they can definitely be a team that's going to make some noise in the Big 12. Um, speaking of Big 12, we're going to actually the Big 10 now, a team that used to be in the Big 12, Nebraska. This is probably my biggest reach for the top 10. I know a lot of people aren't high on them. The reason I'm putting them so high is because I just don't think anybody in the Big 10 has seen an offense like Nebraska. They have a good uh, one-two punch with Burkhead and Martinez at quarterback. Um, they just they know how to run the ball over there, and they lose some offensive linemen, but like I said, I just don't think anybody in the Big Ten seen it. Some people try to compare them to Michigan. They run a much different spread attack than Michigan did, so I think they'll catch people off guard. Um, on the defensive side, they lose five starters. Prince Amukamara was their All-American. He's gone, but they received some big news. Uh, defensive lineman Jared Crick's coming back. He's going to really hold down the line for them, and the black shirt defense has really seen a resurgence the last couple years, so I expect them to keep that going there in Nebraska. The last team in the top 10, coming from out west, the Pac-10, the Oregon Ducks, coming off their heartbreaking championship loss to Auburn. Of course, we all know a lot about their offense. They have three offensive line starters coming back. Their quarterback, their running back, LaMichael James, was third in Heisman uh, voting this past year. I think the big thing for them on offense is going to be replacing Jeff Mayo, their big receiver. They like to throw a lot of screens out there to him. They need to find somebody to replace him. They have a young guy actually coming in next year named Devon Blackman. I think he's a candidate maybe to get some of those catches. On defense, they're losing quite a bit, of, uh, quite a few starters. But the good news is Nick Aliotti, their defensive coordinator, he likes to rotate a lot of players. So they're used to playing about 25 guys on defense. So most of the young guys have a lot of experience. They've also got a... Uh, cornerback Nick Harris, who is a candidate for first-team All-American honors. Uh, he had an interception in the BCS championship game, and he, I think he was second in the country in punt return average, so he's also a weapon on special teams. All right, guys, that's my top 10 teams for uh, the 2011 season. I know it's early, but it's exciting. Please be sure to check us out, www.fifthdownfootball.com. Follow us on Twitter. Send us your suggestions. We look forward to hearing from you, and until next time, uh, Enjoy the off season.